we're live. Hi, everyone. I'm Debbie Schwartz, founder of Road to College and the Paying for College 101 Facebook group. And I am here tonight with Brad Schiller, CEO Hello. of Prompt. So um, I always like to give people a few minutes just to, to get you getting notified, just to come on. I will say, and I just told Brad this two seconds ago, that um, I'm trying a new feature on the platform that I go, I, I do the Facebook Live. So we are supposedly simultaneously going live on our Facebook page, Road to College, and in the Facebook group, Paying for College 101. So I'm hoping that this works. And um, to know if it works, if anybody can just post something in the comments, say hi, tell us where you're from, your, you know, what year your kid's at, that yeah. would be great. And, and how confident your, your student is in their essay. Yes, tell us a little bit about where they are in the essay process. I'm just going to give you one little, I don't know, um, housekeeping thing related to uh, if anybody is watching this from the Facebook group, the one little glitch is that um, I don't see your name. So if I don't, you know, kind of like, uh, I will see your comments, but I don't know who's who's writing the comments. So that's like a yeah. privacy thing with Facebook. So I just want you guys to know that if you're commenting on the page, I will see your name. So, but, okay, Sharon, yay, so you're from the page. Uh, <laughs> Sharon's from Maryland, and she has a senior struggling to finish the essays. Okay, I'm sure we will address that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it just seems to be like the number one uh, thing that we're covering tonight. But I so. guess, you know, Brad and I have been doing these Facebook Lives really since August, so I guess, Brad, the good thing is, at least from Sharon, that they've started because that was the first like option. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good to get something uh, started. Right. Right. That's the, uh, that's the key. Um, and now we're in the second phase of like, oh, we started, but we can't finish this. We don't, we don't, or I've gotten messages of people saying we started, you know, we're, we're doing another tactic. Yeah. Struggling. Uh, we have another one here struggling to fit my common app essay into the 650 word limit. Right. So yep. that that's, uh, just one comment there. What's actually funny is, is that we get that from a lot of people. And I find that any draft of any essay that I see, I can basically help cut down that, let's say it's 800 words. We can basically get that to 40% of that words. So that's the general lift though. <laughs> You're basically, you have 60% too many words, like already. <laughs> like I, and you could say like the exact same thing within it. It's kind of funny. Uh, it almost never fails. Uh, that it's like 40%. Um, just it's kind of a interesting rule. Great. A few more people. Again, anybody, if you um, join us, to say a quick hello in the comments. Tell us, um, like we heard earlier, what your student is struggling with. But the essay tonight is about college essays. It's an AMA. If, if you know what that is, it's an Ask Me Anything session. But I called it an ABA because it's an Ask Brad Anything. <laughs> oh. So creative, Debbie. That, that should go in your college essay right there. Uh, all right. And uh, um, but we could probably yeah, we could probably go ahead and get started whenever because yeah. you know, tonight is really their time. And uh, we have a bunch of essays that were sent in and we're gonna randomly select some. Um, to uh, ooh, a shout out from the West Coast. That's, that's always fun. Dave, I know Dave uh, spoken. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to like kind of randomly select these and we're going to get essays. We're going to actually like provide live feedback on these and talk about. Right. So our goal today um, is that hopefully your student has started writing the essay. Um, and if that's the case, Fantastic. If not, I think you're still going to pick up a lot. A lot of today is really focused on how do we actually take the essay and improve the essay to get to the final product that we're all confident in. Okay. Because what we really care about is that our student, as well as, or students, if you have twins or triplets, uh, actually, it's funny, my, my cousins are currently applying to college, they're triplets. So I'm helping them with their essays. Um, and uh, um, so students in, the, in, in, in my cousin's case. Um, and then the, um, you know, we're, we're going to talk a lot about like, okay, a lot of the tips that you'll get today as I'm reading through the essays, you'll be able to apply these same techniques uh, to your students' essays as well as, as we go. 
Uh, just a couple of housekeeping items. One is we just released this really awesome uh, parent guide to the college essay. So it's basically a step-by-step -step guide uh, that happens to be about 8,000 words long. We tried to make it as short as possible, but there's a lot of content. <laughs> um, and it basically walks you through step-by-step -step, uh, a lot of the theory behind college essays, uh, what they should be about, some of the myths, all of that sort of stuff in there that can help you help your student uh, have a more compelling essay. So it even will cover a lot of the stuff we're talking about today in terms of how to provide feedback on your student's essay, okay? So that's housekeeping item number and one. Put that link in the comments. Yeah, so I'll you drop that link into the comments. Highly recommend that you uh, that you take advantage of that. Uh, number two is that just a little bit about uh, myself, our company Prompt. Uh, so we work with more students on more essays than any other company in the world. Okay, um, and so what that means is we actually have over 175 essay coaches that can work with you and your, your student in one of two ways. One is if they haven't really started writing anything yet or are not confident in the topic they've selected for their essay, you could do a live video coaching call with one of our coaches, okay? To get things kicked off, you align on, here's what we're gonna write about in the essay and uh, here's an outline for the essay so your student knows exactly what to do and go execute on to get to a really good first draft that they're confident in. Second is we provide feedback on essays and we provide feedback on tens of thousands of essays a year. Um, and the process that, and you'll kind of see how we go about it today, except today it's gonna to be a little bit more high level because we don't wanna spend 45 minutes on each essay. <laughs> um, because when we provide feedback, we're spending like 45 minutes per draft uh, of an essay, okay? So we're going to um, go over there and you know, we, we're also gonna talk a little bit about some supplements today. So one of the essays that we got was a supplemental essay. Uh, and a lot of the tools and techniques that you learn today will also apply to supplements or like the University of California Personal Insight questions and, and all of that sort of, uh, sort of stuff. So I guess, uh, I don't know, no, Brad, that, there any questions that came in before, that, yeah. before we like jump into some essays? Yes, Sharon asked, what kind of lead time is there for an essay coach? I'm assuming like like how much lead time you might need to set it up to work with an Oh essay. yeah, oh, that's a great question. Uh, I always forget this because we work like 24 seven. <laughs> so <laughs> like everybody, I get this on the phone a lot. People will call us and they'll be like, well, well, when, when can we get started? It's like, well, did you create an account and get started? <laughs> because then, then you can get started. Um, so usually if you want a coaching call with one of our coaches, you can get that scheduled a lot of times within a few hours. That's like a live call. You can also just upload your essay for a review and you have two options. One is like the standard 48 hours, you'll have your essay back within uh, with feedback on it, which I highly recommend, just do that. Um, but you can get it back within as few as six hours if you want to. Uh, and as the deadline really approaches, we're not even close to the deadline yet. You should see us a week before the deadline. Well, you're, um, kind of, you're kind of getting close to an early. Yeah, well, we're kind of getting close. What I'm saying I, is that yeah you're all here and you're probably very stressed and freaking out about this. Let me tell you, this is still early for a lot of kids that we work with. Um, so we are right now reviewing about 250 something essays a day uh, by the time October 31st rolls around, which is our busiest day of the year, we'll be five to 600 essays in like a single day before the early action deadline. Um, so the nice part is, is you actually have some time here because it really takes only like two to three drafts of a common app essay until it's done. Uh, supplemental essays, one to two drafts until it's done. So you have some time and um, so don't be stressed about this. It's actually, this whole thing is a lot easier than you, than you think it is. And we're gonna talk a lot about some of the, dispelling some of the myths, talking about some of the uh, feedback, like how to provide feedback and what we're really looking for as we're going through uh, these essays today, and we're gonna kind of use those as we go, and then we're gonna take questions and stuff between the between the essays. So okay. I, just another kind of question, and you might wanna address this later, but I see two people are commenting that their students are applying to the UCs. Yeah, so the University of California personal insight questions, um, they're actually my favorite um, application essays, period. Um, because one, they're shorter, the 350 words. Number two is 
that they actually tell you what you they want to know. Um, so they actually within the prompt they say, "Here's all the information that we actually want you to write about," which is which is fantastic. Um, and you can use a really direct approach. So they don't really want like a lot of storytelling in it, and that's actually what their admissions officers say. They just want you to answer the prompt, um, you know, provide some detailed information about your experiences, and then wrap up. And honestly, they don't even care that much about grammar or sentence structure. Oh. <laughs> uh, I mean, you you should you should care about grammar. Like you should reread your essays, but it doesn't have to be like the it doesn't have to be a beautifully written thing. And what's actually fascinating is that the Common App essay, which we're going to look at a lot of examples today because I skimmed a bunch of them. Everybody tries to be just really creative, use a lot of like narrative language, all sorts of storytelling, that sort of thing, and you don't really need to do that or you don't need to do it to the level that you think that you're doing too okay so it's still helpful to be descriptive set scenes all that sort of stuff but you'll see today that we're really going to talk a lot about like how do we reduce that storytelling to fit in a lot more content uh that the content that really matters okay okay two more quick things one is i'm just this is a housekeeping thing but dave is asking these facebook lives are always recorded um we repost them in both the group and on the Facebook page. And I will share a link later that you, if you want to go back and look at any of our Facebook lives for the past two years, they are in like a, a certain section that says live videos on the page. So anyhow, the point is, don't worry if you don't want to take notes or anything, or you have to leave early, this is recorded. Um, but there was one other quick question, uh, Brad, I think is worthwhile for you to comment on is Pat is saying, I wasn't really worried about the essay, but now I am, I thought they were gonna take care of it in school. Can I rely on them? Yeah, so it's, it, here's, here's the way that I look at this, okay? Um, you have, you know, counselors and teachers in school and a lot of schools now teach the admissions essays. Some do a good job of it, the college essays, some do a good job of it, and some struggle with it more because honestly, it's like, a, it's a very small piece in everything else that they need to teach, number one. And number two is, is that it's a very different essay than any other essay that you're going to write for academics, okay? So a lot of the times, this is something that just gets thrown on to an English teacher, for example, and it's kind of outside of the purview of all the other stuff that they're teaching, okay? So that's number one. But the real important item here is, uh, is that, is the feedback on the essay. So it's not about, so yes, the stuff before the essay to help students get started is really important, but the feedback that gets provided and going through what we call it, like the draft and review view process or draft and revision process uh, is really critical. And what we find is, is that, uh, and we work directly with over a hundred high schools. So let's keep that in mind. Like we, what we find is, is that it's a capacity issue. Okay. So a teacher, if they have, you know, you're an English teacher, or you're a college counselor, and at a lot of schools, they have, you know, 100 plus students that they're dealing with themselves as a counselor or as the teacher. They can maybe spend 10 minutes providing feedback on a common application essay, maybe. Um, we find that on the first draft of a common application essay, we need to spend 45 to 50 minutes to provide feedback on that essay to really generate one like actionable feedback on how they can improve content and structure, not just like sentence level grammatical fixes. Um, but two is to actually help the student understand why they need to make changes. And then three is to provide an action plan for them to go and actually make those changes. Okay. Um, so we find that it's really just primarily a capacity issue in terms of being able to provide a lot of really detailed feedback on essays. Um, because for students that are, especially once, let's say you're applying to like a highly selective school, for example, you can, um, uh, you might be, need seven plus hours of one-on-one -on -one feedback on your essays. Okay. Uh, the University of California, which we heard a couple times about here, they have four 350 word essays. That alone is about an hour and a half just to provide feedback on the first drafts of all those essays. Okay. Um, cause it's just a lot. It's really a lot. And it's, in, it's just a capacity issue because all the students are writing it all at the same time of the year and asking the same teachers and the same counselors for help on this. And those same teachers and counselors 
those counselors are writing recommendations letters. The teachers are teaching other things, right? It's just a capacity issue. That's the primary thing that that we find that we that we run into. And how I like to think about this is, you know, you may have, you know, when when your student prepared for let's say the SAT or the ACT uh, test, there's a good chance that they went to maybe a class of some kind on the SAT or the ACT to learn how to do it, uh, maybe even one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And that was probably somebody outside of the school that delivered that. You know, it's not necessarily something that they teach in the school. Uh, and so we look at this as like a very similar type of thing, okay? In other words, if you're getting a coach for test preparation, getting a coach for essay coaching is a really good investment. And honestly, is actually, in most cases, much less expensive. <laughs> okay. So, you know, we're, we're, you know, we might be paying like $75 to get one of your drafts reviewed with us, but um, you know, and you can get it for less than that as well. Uh, we actually currently have a discount code uh, for road to college that Debbie will drop into the comments R2C early, which is $25 off mm -hmm. first credit. So you get it for $50. Um, and so we highly recommend, you know, taking advantage of the coach. Um, not to say like, there's a lot of schools, a lot of counselors, a lot of teachers that do a fantastic job with this, um, you know, and so I don't want to take anything away from them. I know a lot of them, um, you know, and they they trust what what we do. And some of them even send students to us. Uh, but as I said, it's a lot of times it's a capacity issue um, more than anything. No, maybe. And, and you'll see just like as we go through these essays tonight, I haven't even spent much time thinking about them other than just skimming them really quickly to see which ones we may want to take a look at. Um, it really like, there's a lot of depth that we need to get into here and it takes a lot of expertise and seeing like thousands of these essays to really, uh, to be able to pick out some of the issues. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, and just if people didn't realize, um, we posted this for the past few days that, um, students could send in their essays to be in the hot seat tonight. And so, um, I forwarded as many essays as we got onto Brad, and he is now going to kind of go through them. Yeah, I'll dive in here. And we just had one question that I saw, which was the Common App essay and the Coalition app. Um, you can use your 650 word Common Application essay in the co for the Coalition app essay, except for the University of Washington, uh, because they think they're special. But is the Coalition app fewer words? Uh, so this year they decided that um, because people were upset that you can just send in your comment. <laughs> because a lot of schools were actually doing that anyway. So it was funny that instead of the co coalition app prompts, they would say, actually, why don't you write these prompts that are the exact same thing as my comment app prompts? <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> we started doing that last year and now, uh, but you have to check, check with the school, but I think it's all of them except for the University of Washington. You can just use the same essay which I recommend. They still say 500 to 550 words, but don't waste your time. No, don't, don't waste your time. Yeah. Okay. You're right. Sharon's confirming. Can the coalition app? Yeah. So the answer is, is like, yes. Uh, it depends on the school. Just check on it. Uh, but they have like a recommended word count of 500 to 550, but you can really just submit your, your common app essay. Okay. Uh, and yes, the university of Washington is thinks they're special and you can't do that. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to pull up our first essay. And so what I'm going to do with each of these is I am going to, I don't know what's going on here. Wait, so can you, sh I don't think we've tried this, Brad, on this platform. Can you share your screen? Do you have the little, do you have a little buttons at the bottom? Oh, yeah, I, I have a share screen button. It's just, okay. it was slightly confusing because now I actually have to like, I had to click on something. Um, all right, so now we are sharing my screen. Fantastic. And I am going to pull up our first essay prompt. Essay. All right, let's do this one. Actually, no, I want to, we'll come back to this one in a second. Uh, I want to do, mm, let's do this one first. Okay, cool. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the essay out loud because it's probably hard to see it on your tiny screens. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, what I'm going to do is like normally what I do is ask everybody's opinion on this. Uh, but what I'm going to do instead is just kind of give my own thoughts on the essay. 
uh, and talk about how to improve it. And then we'll take some questions related to that and then we'll move on to the next one. Sound good? Yeah. All right. So this essay is called 1,862 Miles. The seatbelt signs dings. And I hear the pilot announce, cabin crew, prepare for landing. I gaze outside my window and see the familiar snow-covered mountaintops. I'm back home. After exiting the plane and going through customs, I arrive at the baggage claim where I'm greeted by my grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. I haven't seen them in nearly three years and was overjoyed to reconnect with them. As we were driving towards my grandmother's house, I catch up with my cousins. Among the numerous questions they had for me, one stuck out in particular. Do you wish you lived here so you could be by your family? I was taken aback when asked this, but it made me wonder, what if I did live closer to my relatives in Canada? I was only two years old when my dad received a job opportunity in Texas. We don't have any family in Texas, let alone the United States. Since I no longer lived close to my relatives, loneliness consumed me when I was younger. All of my friends would talk about their plans to visit their grandparents over the weekend while mine was across the northern border. I envied them and I wished that I too could be close to my family. Soon I realized that my family was right beside me. Growing up in a different country than my relatives has, has revealed the true meaning of family, the people who are right by your, your side. Being in Texas has given me the freedom to become my best self. This newfound independence sparked the maturity within me. I surround myself with a compassionate group of people as my friendship with them became stronger, the loneliness eating away at me vanished. I felt loved in Texas, but every so often a Facebook birthday post from my cousins would reopen the gap. I felt as if I was missing out on growing up with my relatives, that I would never be able to show them how I've grown over the years because we lived in two different worlds. This isolation was pulling at my heart. When my cousin graduated from high school last summer, I especially felt as if I was missing missing out on not living in Canada. All of my relatives were posting pictures of them together on graduation day, and I knew I wouldn't be able to experience that when I graduate. When these feelings of loneliness came trickling back, I turned to my friends to, re to release all my emotions. After expressing how I felt, she replied, it doesn't matter how far away you are from your relatives because you will always be bonded by blood. The friends and family that you have here will be there for you no matter what, I'll always appreciate the time you spend with them. When we finished our heartfelt conversation, I came to the realization that she was right. Continuing to feel excluded from my family would do me no good, and I needed to accept the fact that we lived in two completely different countries, and I did. I gained a deeper under appreciation of my family in Texas, cherished the time that I spent with my family and fr my friends, and recognized how lucky I am to be here. To answer my cousin's question, do you wish... You lived here so you could be by your family. I do not. I will always hold a place in my heart for Canada, but while living in Texas, I have grown over the years, overcame my feelings of isolation, and learned the true meaning of family. I wouldn't be the confident, mature individual that I am today if I hadn't moved 1,862 miles away. All right. So as I said, normally I ask people what, what, they, what they think about the essay, but we're not going to do that today. But if you want to drop that into the comments, that would be pretty fun as well. And Debbie can kind of relay that over to me. But there's really kind of a, a basic approach that we take whenever we provide feedback on essays. So the first thing we do is we'll skim the essay, uh, take a look at it. And we want to read this essay in generally like one to two minutes. And the reason for that is because that's about how long your admissions officer is actually going to spend reading the essay. Okay. Um, so that's an important consideration here. And then the first question that we'll, we'll ask ourselves a series of questions. The first one that we ask ourselves is, what did I learn about the student? Then after we answer that, which I'll, which I'll get to in a second, then we'll ask ourselves, is that compelling or not? So basically, how can we improve upon the content? Which I kind of look at this question as, what didn't I learn that I actually wanted to learn in this essay, okay? And then number three is we look at, is this essay well-structured? And then we go through the process of identifying uh, how we can actually improve the structure of the essay and where we can fit in additional content to kind of resolve some of the questions that, that kind of popped into our minds 
these unanswered questions as we were reading the essay that we can make the content more compelling. So that's kind of the general overview of how we approach this. Um, and like the typical essay that, like first draft of this Common App essay that we're seeing here, um, or it might be the Applied Texas essay, they're all relatively similar. Um, what, what we do is we will, um, you know, basically we'll, we'll write, provide about 700 words plus of feedback on the essay that, you know, is like a 650 word essay, right? So let's kind of like dive in and really talk about what did I actually learn about the student as a result of reading this essay? And then I'm actually gonna compare that and we're gonna talk about what colleges are looking for, okay? Uh, just to provide some additional context. Okay, so if you want, you can drop into the comments, just say like, here's like the three or four words that I would use to describe the student after reading this essay. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the words that that, that come to my mind, and Debbie, you can jump in as, as well uh, as you see fit, or what other people are kind of posting in the comments. Um, so, you know, one of the things that I see here is that Basically, like if I was to summarize the, the theme of this essay, like what am I learning about the student? It's that the student cares a lot about their family. Right? Yep. They're a bit homesick. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, but they've had a realization that actually their friends, their friend group in Texas is, you know, essentially their family um, and that they're okay with that. Right. That's mostly what I'm getting yep. from this essay. Now, there may be a couple of other things as, as well within that, but that's kind of the general uh, gist of it. Now, when I'm thinking about, now we're going to talk about, there's there's basically five critical traits that colleges are really looking for in students, okay? Um, and so I'm just going to talk a little about those five traits now, because when we look at other essays, we're also going to apply these kind of five traits. Because what I want to do is I want to learn, so colleges are basically, they're, they're using these essays, they're using the application. Um, they want, what they're looking for is for you to prove that you will be successful in college and beyond. Okay. And the proof of your, uh, that you will be successful is based on the, your experiences within your essay and the content within your essay and a little bit on, okay, here's your GPA and test scores and that sort of stuff. Right. So you're, maybe a hard worker, that sort of thing. Uh, but within the essay, what they're really looking for is five kind of key traits and your, and some experiences related to these, um, at least two or three of these traits that kind of will prove that you will likely be successful in college and beyond. So the first of those traits is drive. So we wanna know that the student is really like driven, you know, that whenever they see a challenge that they're going to just overcome that challenge because they're likely to face challenges in college and in life. And instead of shutting down, they're just going to, you know, plow through and, and overcome those challenges. Okay. Now, when we look at this particular essay, I'm not really getting that in a significant way. Right. Okay? So that's number one. Uh, number two is in, the second trait that I'm looking for is intellectual curiosity. Okay. Um, so these are students that really just enjoy learning for fun. So they have certain topics or areas of interest that they kind of, in their free time, they're just diving into. You know, they might be going down various YouTube rabbit holes of learning or like engaging with uh, communities of, of like-minded people on Reddit, you know, about like climate change and all sorts of other things like that. There's like a certain topic and they're just getting really deep knowledge in it because they find it fascinating, okay? Um, or it might even be like, I'm a proving my skills at something, right? Intellectual curiosity. Um, and I'm not really getting that in this essay either. You know, and once again, that's not the end of the world uh, because there's other traits as well. The third trait that we look for is initiative. So basically students that are, take the initiative are very entrepreneurial. They're always kind of looking at whatever group of people that they're a part of or organization they're a part of, they're finding out kind of what's wrong and they're always thinking of ways to improve it. All right, so they're always kind of improving whatever they're a part of. And here there may be some stuff there, but I'm not really getting at it in a significant way. Um, you know, but that this person has a friend group, maybe they're doing some stuff with them, maybe they're executing on some things, potentially. Uh, the fourth one is contribution. So basically 
these are students who are contributing positively to anything that they're a part of, whether or not that's their peer group, friends around them, et cetera. And I'm getting a little bit of that here, but I'm not really seeing like how this particular student is contributing to their like group of peers that they've built this like it's group not of. specific enough. Yeah, it's not specific enough, right? It's it's basically like, okay, they have a group of peers. It seems like they're really close to each other, but I'm not sure what this person's role is right. within that group. Okay. Are they the leader, the entrepreneur, the person that's just like Bring, you know, creating just really positive and, and creating positivity towards everybody, uh, that sort of thing. And then the fifth one is what we call diversity of experiences. And so diversity of experiences is basically schools are trying to create a class of people that come from, uh, that have just a lot of different various experiences in their lives, right? So that way they're bringing different unique perspectives to their college. And so you could say, okay, diversity of experience, maybe this part around living in the United States, your family being abroad, uh, not being close to your family while growing up. You could look at that as, okay, maybe that would count as diversity of experience. At the same time, when I look at a lot of other applicants to a given university, there's a lot of other applicants that have probably experienced something relatively similar, okay? Uh, especially maybe some international applicants or other things like that. So can I just interrupt for one second? I miss, I, I, all of this is in the parents' guide. Yeah, all of this is in the parents' guide. Yeah, so I'm just, so <laughs> don't freak out like that Brad just went through these five traits and then you couldn't write them down fast enough. Or, I mean, of course, you can come re-watch re this, but um, we'll put in the link again. Just download the parents' guide as, as, as your guide. Yeah, yeah, you can also access all of this by just creating an a, account uh, at prompts.com slash road to college. Uh, and there's a menu there called content that has like a step-by-step -step guide through like how to, that your student can go through, uh, for how to like identify what to write about in their essays. Okay. okay. I didn't want to interrupt you, but I knew yeah, no, no, that, that makes sense. So, yeah. so, like, here, so here's the thing, right? So basically we've, we've said, here's what I learned about the student. I compare that to what colleges are looking for in students. And there's a big gap. Okay. Now what we try to do is we try to identify like how do we fill in that gap with other content. And now, you know, I don't know this student particularly well, and there's a chance that the student may even end up completely changing uh, their topic. But let's talk about like how do you make this specific topic significantly better from a content perspective, okay? So first of all, um, you know, what we do is we try to look for pieces of information that we find to actually be really compelling, okay? So it sounds like this student has done a really good job of creating a very close-knit group of friends, all right? And that they've found that they've been able to lean on their friends for different things, and maybe their friends lean on them as well, uh, when you're going through like re relatively tough times. Okay. And when I look at that and I think, wow, that, that can actually be relatively compelling. So if you have a extremely group, close group of friends and you can actually write about situations where, you know, one, maybe it's like, how did you form this friend group or two, um, you know, how have you contributed to this particular group of individuals? Right. Or three is like, what I would say is like, imagine that you weren't there with this group of people, like would they exist as a group? Are you kind of the thread that holds them together? Um, if you weren't there, like what wouldn't have happened uh, that ended up happening as a result of you being there? You know, would people have like uh, not overcome certain challenges or problems because you were there to kind of help them think through that? And you wanna identify these like really compelling things that you did to contribute basically to this group or to contribute to your school's community or contribute to, um, you know, something else, right? And so in that case, you can actually look at it and say, okay, now I can start uh, really showing that I'm like a contributor. Um, like if I, you, the school could see you on their campus and you would think, and they would think, wow, this is a student that's really gonna come in here and be a significantly positive impact on their class at school, right? So anybody that they interact with is just going to be made better as a result of their presence, right? You can have that coming across in the essay. You can have something that's more initiative oriented 
I think, based off of what I'm seeing here, that might come across in their essay, uh, where they're kind of doing something that's a little more entrepreneurial or kind of changing the status quo uh, and making things better, right? Um, so I would focus on those things more in the essay. And then, uh, and so we kind of identify like all of these like brainstorming questions that kind of hone in on like, here's some really interesting stuff that we had and saw in the essay and how can we expand upon that? Then we think about like, how do I think about structuring my essay? Okay. So most of this essay, like what is, I look at this thing, you know, if, if I am deciding to keep uh, the theme of kind of, okay, I've formed my own group of relatives, basically my own family in Texas, if we're keeping that with that theme, then what we want to do is we want to condense a lot of this content to get to that theme. All right. So basically what, what really matters? Like I don't need to know cabin crew preparing for landing. Uh, I don't necessarily need to know as a lot of detail around what I did, you know, what I'm saying, lift closer, you know, uh, to my relatives, a lot of this sort of stuff. But basically within your, the main point you want to make within your first three sentences to four sentences of the essay, and by that I mean literally like maybe five lines max, basically what you want to say is, um, you know, I you need this to come across, and you want to set a little bit of a scene as well because it makes it more compelling, but basically what you want to get across is I moved to Texas when I was two, right? I rarely see my family. And when I do, I realize how much I'm missing. Because of that, I decided that I need, I took it upon myself to actually form my own family in Texas. Right. And then the rest of the essay is like, the next section of the essay is like, on how did you do that? Then the next section of the essay is on, well, what was the meaning of that, right? So like, how did you contribute to that family? Um, what problems did you solve? Like, when did you take any sort of initiative? Like what, how did you contribute to them? Uh, and that's like the next section or two sections of the essay. And then you can even have a third section of the essay that's on like how you were able to lean on them in time, like a time of a challenging time for you um, in order to, you know, kind of, it, it should show kind of the resolve of this like group of people. And then you can wrap up the essay and say, you know, that you've glad you found this family and that you look forward to expanding your family in college, mm. you know, or something like that. Okay. And that can be a pretty good essay. Now, I wouldn't say that it's my favorite essay ever, um, but I do think that uh, just because I don't know like all the ins and outs of, of this student and kind of their, their friend group, but I do think that there's enough there or likely enough there that you can make a really compelling essay out of it. Okay. So I'm going to pause there. Let's see what other questions or thoughts that had kind of come in as we were going here. But just at a really high level, this is way too long for an introduction. You should talk about like five, five sentences max. Within five lines, I need to understand what's going on in this essay. Like what I need to have a good sense of where this essay is headed. And right now, I don't really have a sense of where this essay is headed. I kind of thinking is like, okay, how is any of this relevant? You're talking a lot about you were two. Um, I don't know how old you were when this 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 other part happened. Um, I soon the soon I realized my family was right beside me. Okay, great, but I, I'm still light, a little bit confused by that. Is okay was like who was your family? You know, I formed my own family would be a little bit more interesting. Like you created like your own family. That's a little bit more forthright. Like you don't want to. Basically, what you want is you want to your introduction to kind of guide the, the reader to the point where they think, okay, if you were to ask them what was likely going to happen in the essay, they would be 80% correct. All right. Um, it's the same with almost any movie that you watch. Usually within the first five minutes of the movie, you could pretty much guess the ending of the movie. It's pretty obvious. A lot of times you can even do that just by the title, right? Or literally just because it's a rom-com or, you know, whatever it is. But why do you keep watching the movie? It's about the journey to get there and filling in all the gaps of knowledge and knowledge. And so you should approach your essay in a relatively similar way. All right. So anything that came in, Debbie, or we're going to. No, not yet. Not yet. I, I just want to make a comment. I think um, 
the on first read, I mean, the essay reads very nicely, you know, but as you pointed out, as a reader, you haven't learned enough about the student. Yeah. And so this is this is actually the number one thing that we we see, Debbie, is that a lot of students are like fairly good writers, mm -hmm. but because we don't do a there's so much disinformation out there on the internet on you know sometimes in, in the classroom like everywhere about like how to write an admissions essay that we end up seeing that a lot of students just are not including the right types of content mm -hmm. right? or the right structure mm -hmm. right? all of these things like that and that's really where you know what we're really coaching students on the sentence level stuff yeah it, Okay, great. Like, but but <laughs> you know, most mo mo the vast majority of our work is just on content and structure, and like, how do we think, help students improve that? Okay. Okay. Sharon does have a question. Sure. She, she's saying you say you need to know where the essay is going within the first five lines, but it but it doesn't really need a thesis stated, right? That, that, that is that is that is correct. So I use what's called what I like to call a guiding sentence. Okay which provides direction to the essay. So in this case, the guiding sentence is basically, soon I realized my family was right beside me. So now I have a, a sense of connective tissue in the essay that, okay, this is why the student has written about this, their, their Canadian family, right? And I have a sense that, okay, they found their family you know, in Texas, right? I, I, I get that sense from reading this line. I think this line could be a bit better, right? Around like that you actually like created your own family in Texas or, you know, do use different language, but that's a guiding sense. In other words, I don't know all of the details, uh, but I have a pretty good sense of likely what the, their, where this essay is headed for the rest of the essay. All right. Uh, for the University of California personal insight questions, you do not want basically almost any of this content. You just have enough space. Yeah, you literally kind of start with almost a thesis statement or a guiding sentence and you just say, you know, basically your, you, if this was a University of California personal insight question essay, you would basically say, um, I live 1,862 miles away from my family. I rarely see them. Um, it disheartened me and, but, I created my own family in Texas. <laughs> like that, that, that would work really well for like literally as simple as that for the uh, the University of California personal insight questions. Because they really don't want you to waste words uh, on setting a scene, for example. But you can. What you do want to do in the University of California personal insight questions is like provide enough information to provide a sense of okay, this is the situation, this is what this essay is about, and then go from there. Okay. Great. Great. All right, let's move on to the next one. We'll do this one that we had just showed up here, uh, mainly because it has some Spider-Man stuff in it. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm personally not the big Spider-Man fan, but uh, I think this is a good one to take a look at because it, it mentioned Spider-Man and, and a lot of people do stuff like this. So um, we can chat about it. Uh, so this is a topic of choice essay prompt. Um, Currently it's seven, 673 words. So, you know, we'll talk about like, how do you reduce word count and all that sort of stuff here. Um, but once again, as I'm reading this, think about those five traits and see if you can spot where those are coming across in the essay. So once again, that's drive, intellectual curiosity, um, initiative, contribution and diversity of experiences. Okay. So my eyes were glued to the screen as I watched Peter Parker swing from skyscraper to skyscraper in New York City almost as if one of his webs had caught me instead of the villain he was currently chasing down. I gasped in amazement as Spider-Man saved countless people from plummeting into the ocean on a runway runaway train using his powerful web shooting abilities. On that day, a deep connection and admiration for the char this character blossomed inside of me as I saw Spider-Man and his adventures coming to life for the very first time. I begged my mom for my next birthday to be completely Spider-Man themed and for my presence to consist of web shooters and wall crawling action figures to match. I'm assuming the students, uh, just my commentary, um, the students probably like 17 at this point, but maybe not. 
Um, she found this obsession of mine pretty amusing because while I was wishing that a spider would come along and give me superpowers, I was also definitely afraid of the eight-legged fiends. Despite this fear of mine, what captivated me about the masked web slinger was the story about how he went from being an average kid to becoming the friendly neighborhood superhero overnight. I began to wish for superpowers like those of Spider-Man that would allow me to help others. Once I found my passion for biology, this dream changed to reflect that. My new dream is to become a microbiologist and conduct research that can help others in the future. Also, this new dream of mine doesn't require me to get bitten by a random radioactive spider, and that's a bonus. This past summer, I participated in an internship where I was able to explore this dream of mine deeper. I worked alongside a graduate student at a university to conduct research regarding the Zika virus and possible routes as to how the virus is able to infect babies before they are born. Initially, I was very hesitant to apply for the opportunity because I felt very intimidated by the idea of engaging in research as a high school student. I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to understand the experiments or the vi virology concepts. With the help and accessibility of my mentors, however, I was able to overcome this fear and take the leap into my journey. As I worked in the lab, I was introduced to so many different people on top and topics of research. This only further convinced me that research was the career path for me. When it came for me to prepare, time for me to prepare to present the research I had completed, I was conflicted. In high school, I would always dread having to present my work because I hated having so many eyes on me all at once. In this situation, I still felt really anxious, but I knew that this was a task that was truly important to me. My summer was spent working towards the final product of this project, and I wanted to share this work with as many people as possible. This project would be a potential source of information to others researching the Zika virus. I worked to with my mentors to improve my presentation constantly until I gained the confidence I so desperately wanted to display. As I finally presented my work, I felt as though all of my hard work had come to fruition and I had done it justice. This was the first presentation that I was genuinely eager to give. Being able to share my findings with the other people in the scientific community made me feel as though I could walk on walls just the same as Spider-Man did all those years ago. This experience not only further developed my passion for microbiology, but also pushed me to, fur to further myself professionally. The sense of accomplishment I felt after sharing my findings has left me with the urge to seek other avenues for presenting my research. What once calls me distress now brings me joy and excitement. My dream as a child never faded. It only evolved. This is how I use science as my superpower. All right. So once again, if you're if you're watching this, feel free, you know, to drop in, you know, here's the words that I like learned about the student as as I was reading the essay. Okay, uh, into the comments if you want. And so if we compare this you know, to the traits that we were just covering. Um, what I think is pretty fascinating here is that, you know, and kind of look at the student, is that I really, what I learn about the student is that one, they're really interested in like becoming a microbiologist. Two is, is that this person is probably really intellectually curious. I'm not convinced of that yet because mm -hmm. it's not, much kind of like self-learning they just went and did an in internship but probably is there uh given some of the other writing uh right it's not really explored in a deeper way but i think there's likely intellectual curiosity um i think that there is likely um some sort of drive here um and i'll and i'll and i'll talk about that because i see here that okay the student really wanted to give a great presentation and really practice probably a lot to do that um, so I see, I see some, you know, some drive there kind of like increasing skills and, um, you know, from like a contribution or initiative standpoint, um, I'm not really seeing much here currently, although I would love to learn a little bit more about the lab experience and like, what was the student's particular specific contribution and the um, results, the results of the, yeah, and, the and the results for yeah. sure for sure. And we'll get into that in like more detail because about three quarters of this essay can basically be, be cut probably. Uh, and so, yep, yep. um, and so we'll get into that in a second. Um, and then, uh, I really like see some diversity of experiences here just in terms of, wow, this is somebody that's really interested in microbiology, 
they're very actually likely to do something microbiology related because they've already had experience in that. And so if I bring them onto my campus, they're they're likely to like bring like a very like different kind of like thought process uh, to to this class uh, that I'm that I'm bringing in. Right? It's not all like engineers or computer scientists or you know uh, English majors or whatever. It's like a fairly unique uh, type thing that the student is interested in. Okay. So I, so I am seeing that as well. Um, so let's talk about the most important pieces of content in this essay. Um, and then like, what are the gaps in the content? And how do we then kind of think about restructuring the essay and like what content can we cut, All right? So we can do this pretty quickly. Um, so first of all, as I'm reading the essay, uh, this entire first paragraph, I'm left wondering how is this relevant? It, it's too much, yeah. Too much. Now, I, that doesn't mean don't use the Spider-Man example at all, because it does give me an early a sense from like your early childhood that you have been really interested in like biology, biology related stuff. So mm -hmm. maybe you can use that, but this is just too much. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, next, um, once I found my passion for biology, this gene reflected that. Finally, like as I'm reading the essay, it's like, oh. Finally, like one third through till you get to the yeah. Middle. Like I'm like finally. Oh, maybe this essay is about like biology. I'm now interested in that, right? But it took me a while to get there. Um, but what's really and then I got really interested because they talked about this internship that they had, which is sounds like it's going to be awesome, right? Um, and now I'm finally learning some content there. But a lot of questions pop into my mind, in particular, right? So Zika virus, blah blah blah. But like what? So now I'm thinking, it's like, okay, what, what did you contribute? Okay. Uh, so, so, so like, what did you contribute to this, to this particular internship? Like, what was your role on this team? Uh, how did you like engage with other researchers and what was the end result of the research that you actually presented and what is the likely impact of that research? And at the same time, I want you to think of like, when you're talking about contributions, think of, and maybe this is not the case, but were there was there anything that you unique value that you uniquely added to this project that another person in this role would not have? So if they had hired a different intern, would the results have been the same? Okay, but or 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 maybe there was like some ideas that you had that they actually took and implemented, right? And it actually made the research significantly better, right? Or maybe you end up with surprising results, or you know whatever it is. Like I would love to know those types of things as a result of this experience. And so there's a lot of, uh, you know, the part around feeling intimidated, uh, not necessarily wanting to apply to the role, uh, your mentors helping you take the leap. That to me is not nearly as interesting. And I would just leave that out. Yep. Okay. Um, now this part around like convince me and researchers, the career path for me, I would say like, you don't necessarily need the sentence here you'll probably like just include this at the end of your essay. And we'll talk about, this is going to be, we'll talk about the structure you should use for this essay, but it's basically going to be like a journey type essay. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. Then the next thing that really popped out at me was not all of this content on how you felt really anxious about this. There's just too much content there before you did this presentation. However, I do want to understand that you did feel anxious, but what you did was, you, took, you knew that you had to do, a, you wanted to do a really good job here. So what you did was prepare. And then what I want you to talk about. Is, the anxiousness. Yeah. So like, I, yeah, cut down on the anxiousness, but like, just say you're anxious. Like that's enough, right? I don't need like five sentences on it. Um, you're anxious. So what you did was you decided that you really wanted to prepare for this presentation, which is unlike anything that you had really done before. And now what you're going to do is you're going to tell me that about the skills, that, the skill that you learned. You talk, tell me about the process that you went through to improve your, to like get to the point where you were confident before you presented this presentation, right? So you said you worked with some mentors, blah, blah, blah. Like what, tell me about how bad the presentation was on the first time that you gave it to your mentors. Talk about the feedback that you got and how you improved it, right? And how you kept iterating and iteratively improving upon your presentation until you gave it, okay? Uh, and then you could talk about, wow, I actually learned something about that experience that like all this hard work and preparation really paid off and got you really excited about the research as well as like excited about being able to do more in the future, right? So you actually like went through this process of improving your skills and, and that can be really compelling as well. 
And then at the end of the essay, um, you know, it's, it's okay to have like a tie in Spider-Man, I guess. Uh, but there's like a, probably some content here that, that can be uh, kind of shored up, but you do want to talk about like your pat, you know, your interest in microbiology and kind of continuing to want to affirm, you know, further that. Um, and so what I, what I love, I love essays that deal with a, um, a sense of your future ambitions because it helps be have like a really clear narrative arc of like, here's where you were, here's how you developed this interest and here's like where you're going in life. Okay. So that's kind of the general structure of this essay. So what I would do is, is I would basically start your essay and say, you know, I've been interested in, um, you know, I don't want to say biology, you know, or microbiology since I was a kid, right? That sounds a little bit much, but, uh, you know, basically since, since you know, um, at age five, may, maybe what you do is you almost have like a little montage at the beginning of your essay. So I'm just giving a little strategy here, right? You know, um, at age five, right, I, uh, I saw Spider-Man, you know, I had a Spider-Man themed birthday party, right? Which was odd because I was scared of spiders, right? You know, at age eight, like I had this experience with like living organisms. At age 10, I had this experience with living organisms. At age 12, I had this experience with living organisms. And guess what, right? It's just to like have a, almost like this montage of like, oh, the student seems always really interested in, you know, living things. And then you could say, you know, and all of this has really led up to, it's like, just like, I'm fascinated by living things, right? And in particular, whatever microbiology is related to, okay? Um, then I would have the first section of your essay, I would have about your intellectual curiosity. So yes, you had this internship, that's great, but tell me about like your intellectual journey, about why are you really inter interested in this particular subject? Talk about like, what do you learn about? Like, how do you engage on this learning? Like, how do you spend your free time learning more about this? Okay, that's section number one. Section number two is about your internship and like the actual research and what you contributed to it and like what you learned about yourself through that process. Section three can be about um, the presentation that you had to give and really about building your skills uh, to give that presentation and the hard work in that, in that iterative process that you went through to get there. And then your conclusion is basically to wrap up and say, you know, that all, everything that you've done, you know, in your life is really pointing you in this direction, uh, you know, to become a microbiologist, right? So the main point here is, is that what, as I said, like what we're doing is we're going through your the essay and we're trying to spot these like specific nuggets of information that tie to these different traits. And then we think through like, how can we expand upon these particular pieces of the essay to make it significantly more compelling and prove that this student really does have this trait in like droves, right? So they've really proved that the student like this, this essay is really about intellectual curiosity, right? It's really about proving that the student is really intellectually curious uh, with some elements of the student being driven and contributing to others and some diversity of experience within it as well. All right, any questions or any comments that, that came up through that? Uh, uh, not comments specific to what you just said, but there was a comment earlier that I think you can um, relate because as you started talking about structure. Um, the comment was, can you show how the last paragraph relates to the first? Isn't that one of the key points admission um, uh, uh, people want to see given the fact that they spend such a short time reading essays, at least initially? So. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so here's the thing. It's not a requirement at all. Um, a lot of people do want like a tie in to something that they said at the beginning of the essay. And it's nice. Like, it's like, oh, that's nice. Um, but that's really what it is. Um, what you're really look, you're not, let's put it this way. What is the purpose of this essay? The purpose of this essay is to prove that you're going to be successful in college and beyond. You're going to learn that from all the students' experiences that they're writing about in their essays. So having some sort of like creative tie-in at the beginning of the essay about like Spider-Man. Okay, that's, that's maybe nice, but is it a requirement? No, I don't need a, like an analogy or a metaphor or other things like that and then have something in my introduction that I could tie to at the end of the essay. If you can, great. If you can't, whatever, not a big deal. Um, so as I said, like if you do include Spider-Man here and you have a tie into Spider-Man at the end of the essay, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. Okay, another question um, about word limit. Um, knowing that the word limit is 650 words, but 
can you do less and should you do less? Uh, the answer is you can do less. Um, the, however, I would say the vast majority of essays that we work with um, are between like 640 and 650 words. Yeah, yeah. So in other words, don't, you know, use the full word count because you have such limited total words across the entire application to really get your, your story across. Okay. All right. That's that's all the comments we have for now. I think. All right, right. let's 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 do another essay. So I'm okay. going to jump over to one that I had seen in all my Microsoft Word essays. Ah, uh, yes, this will do. Let's see, we can we can do this one. All right, and then um, let's see, we have. Debbie, how much longer do we want to go? Do we want to do one more or two more? One more after this. One I more after this. Okay, I got it. I just, I just saw that we, uh, I just checked, and uh, you know, we've been at this an hour. So. Yeah. What, what, wait, one other quick question. Um, just, I know the answer, but you should answer it. Is it bad to go over six hundred fifty word counts by a little? You, you, you. Uh, no, you should not do that. Right. Uh, and I'm not even sure if the Common App even lets you. I don't think it does. I think, yeah. Yeah. So in a lot of these essays, they actually like have a maximum word count and that like, you cannot go over that maximum word count. Um, just so you know, okay. Great. Um, lulled to sleep by the sound of flutes and strangely Matthew Broderick's voice, the tales of the mighty Olympians danced and twirled through the soft air of my bedroom. My most prized possession was a set of four tapes in a worn down case of vivid yellows and oranges depicting Apollo on his chariot. Glorious book of Greek myths. Every night I lay on my side, picturing the vibrant stories of the famed Olympians, their cohorts, and mo most fearsome foes. Their promise in my childhood left me enamored. I was compelled by these beautiful tales, but in no way blind to the reflection of human nature they presented. Well, maybe not the best role model for a teenager facing ups and downs and the transition of, ele uh, of elementary school to middle school. It taught me nothing or no one else could. The importance of the origin story, even the gods had come from somewhere. And to a young person with an overwhelming amount of things going on and a new academic pressures at each turn, I always had something to fall back to. Yes, playing basketball on three teams at once probably didn't sit high on my life of best decisions ever. These tapes were both an ex escape and a reality. To a shy girl who decided from a young age she wasn't a people person, I could escape my days of self-doubt. With that escape came an important reminder that these gods held onto their identities and values no matter what they faced. No, I wasn't going to be flung into the pit of Tartarus, uh, but I could still do my best to know my values and be grounded in who I was. And yes, I was a sh that shy, introverted girl in middle school was quite wrong. I couldn't have been more wrong about myself. No matter how much I protested, I couldn't escape some character development. My love for Greek myths stayed with me when a pivotal chapter in my origin story occurred, a plot twist, if you will. I took a peer coaching class during my ninth grade year. Those who knew me well questioned it a lot. It was unprecedented for someone who had convinced herself that the closest to her that she would make for the absolute worst teacher and worst mentor. Someone better left to themselves. My thought process was that I was Hercules being put to the test on one of the most daunting trials I had yet to face. I already fostered my ideals around challenging myself and working on my weakest points, which were already a, already apparent in my athletics and academics. But this was uncharted water. And Sito, the goddess of the creatures that slipped through the waves and depths of the ocean, had something planned for me. Day one, in a semester-long class, I was sitting in the corner avoiding eye contact and then last day I spent playing basketball and eating pizza with four kids I would, ha would have never met. However, daunting that task felt, it helped me realize that while creating my own origin story mattered, hearing others and helping complete some of their chapters made me happy. And for a few years, that happiness faded from out of my life and was sucked up by my daily draining routine. Year after year, things like basketball slowly faded out of my life. No longer part of my identity. 
I felt it. As I was left with nothing to do, no purpose. Without basketball, who was I? For what was Zeus without his mighty lightning bolts? When I hit my yearly identity crisis this time, I remembered something I had left behind after that ninth grade year. Left with nothing to do, I went back to volunteering. Spending time with people who I wouldn't have, would have never come across in my day-to-day -day life. I took a step back into something I never tru truly never forgot about. This is my origin story, not nearly as memorizing as those of the gods, but special in its own right. These are my first few chapters. All right. So let's talk about this essay. And the reason why I wanted to focus on this one is that, you know, we, we often see, you know, when we look at examples sometimes of essays that are online, um, you know, we see these, the, the, the stuff that's held up as shining examples of these college essays, uh, admissions essays, especially common application essays are ones where there is, you know, metaphors and like ph philosophizing and all sorts of stuff like that. Okay. And the key is like, none of that's necessary. In fact, um, students that have just really solid essays that just tell me about like, who is this student? You know, what experiences have they had? And you're like simple, and straightforward. They get kids into all the same schools as all of like the fanciest, well, most well-written essays out there. Okay. Because what really matters is content. And what really matters is helping me understand who you are as a person, what traits do you have, you know, and will you be successful? Like, do I believe that you are likely to be successful at my school and after you graduate? All right. So for example, at, uh, you know, Harvard University, they had a Supreme Court case uh, this past year where they actually had to really go, like, put forth publicly a lot of their admissions practices. And one of the things that they actually use in their evaluation of students is, do I, like they actually say like, do you believe that this student has the opportunity to have a significantly positive impact on the world? Okay. And so when you're thinking about like my experiences and really showing all these different traits that I have and all that sort of stuff, that, lends itself to like being able to view you as a student in the future, right? Uh, and will you be like somebody that, that can have a significant positive impact on the world? Now let's take a look at this particular essay um, because clearly, you know, this student is trying very hard to use a lot of kind of descriptive language and a lot of like, uh, you know, philosophy and like, here's how I think about the world in their essay versus telling me more about their specific experiences in life and how those changed them and how they affected them. Okay. Um, so in other words, I go through a significant portion of this essay uh, until I actually come to, um, you know, best role models, blah, blah, blah. I finally get the sense from the student that Okay, this is a student. Okay, they they used they play basketball. Then I find out they used to play basketball. Okay, I find out that this is a student that was very probably very shy in middle school, but you know appears to maybe have come out of their shell a little bit in high school, and in particular that started giving back to others, right, and contributing to to other people within her school community or volunteering overall. Okay. So I, I see like in terms of like the traits that I'm that I'm seeing here or that are starting to come across is contribution. Uh, there may be some intellectual curiosity here because the student really like dives in deep into like Greek mythology and stuff, which is which is kind of interesting. Um, but but like not maybe as much intellectual curiosity as I would like to come through. And I don't get really get much proof on the contribution side of things. OK. So I'm really left wondering like who, who really is this student and will this student be successful at my school or not? Okay, will this contribute, really contribute to the, to the school's campus? So when I, when I go through here, like the stuff that really jumped out at me, I was like, here's something that I think is really interesting, right? So 
I think that it's kind of interesting is this part around all of your friends thought that you would be the worst teacher and worst mentor. And you did too. That's pretty interesting. Okay. Um, then you actually like did some tutoring, right? But I don't really learn much about that uh, in this, this process. I do find one thing that you're avoiding contact, uh, eye contact, and then all of a sudden you were with four kids you never met. And that may be kind of interesting because you clearly have gone on this journey to from being you know, a fairly you know, shy and reserved person to somebody that's being a lot more outward. Uh, and we see that actually is a lot of times a really fantastic topic to an essay. And then we find that you went back to volunteering. Great. Okay. Um, and that's really interesting. I would like to learn a lot more about that. But as we see here, there's really only about three or four things that I'm picking up kind of across the entire essay that I would say, I really want to learn a lot more about this. Now, ultimately, you, you will need to decide whether or not including the stuff about Greek mythology is really core to like your overall personal story or not. In other words, did you just include that because you thought that it would be like, sound great uh, and seem really clever? Or is that actually like a critical part of your being? And if it's a critical part of your being, we got to figure out how to tie that back better into your overall story. All right, your actual like overall origin story and like your overall story altogether. But what I really look at this is an essay that I would actually start with if I was going to get, you know, potentially get rid of some of the Greek mythology or maybe you can include some of it in there. I really think that this is a pretty funny way to start an essay, which is basically that, um, you know, you, you decide to take this peer coaching class, right? And that you, like, if you started your essay, basically that, you know, both you and your, your, the people that knew you the best thought you would make a terrible teacher and a terrible mentor. Like, and that would be a funny way to start the essay. And then explain like, well, <laughs> that immediately gets me thinking, well, why? Right, and then you answer that right away. And it's because you're this like shy kind of more uh, person that avoided eye contact, all that sort of stuff, right? This wasn't, it just wasn't who you were. And from that, and but then you can have a guiding sentence that says, but really like this was like the inciting incident that's really changed you into this like new person, okay? And so then what you can do is you can actually talk to me about in this first section of your essay, you can go through and say, here's who I used to be. Like in middle school, uh, my freshman year in high school, when I first got there, this is who I used to be, right? Uh, and you can actually show like some of your experiences. Maybe there were some times that, you know, you were asked to do something, but you didn't do it. But you wanted to, but you didn't do it because you were afraid. Then in the middle of your essay, the sec next section of your essay is kind of about the specific moment where you became this like pure mentor and you kind of changed, okay? And you were actually good at it, maybe, okay? Um, and that could be that second section of the essay. And then the third section of your essay is like, well, you're now this new person, as what I call like the new you, right? So you realize that you are this different person, but now you've gone on and said, here's all these other things that I could do now that continues like being able to contribute to others, right? Which is the, uh, and really like discovering yourself, which is like all this volunteer work and other things like that. And you probably don't even necessarily need to mention basketball within this whole context because it appears that maybe you stopped doing that after like ninth grade year, right? It may not be like a critical part of your story, uh, or at least it doesn't feel like it is at this point in time, right? And then at the end of the essay, maybe there's like some tie into your future ambitions. And based off of everything that you've learned about yourself, maybe you want to be a teacher or do something with students or do something with helping other people uh, and teaching other people or other things like that, right? That you could tie in at the end. But that's kind of how I look at this, this particular, uh, you know, how you could think about improving this essay and really focusing on the content that really shows some of your traits and who you are and this like journey that you went on. All right, Debbie, any, anything that came up? There's a question that came up before, but I think it relates to what you're talking about. Um, Sharon's asking, does a student need to be very blatant in the message when, that they're trying to convey? So in other words, should they say, I've always been very curious about X or 
um, I was able to overcome, you know, or can the essay be more subtle in what they're trying to convey? So it's basically like how direct do they need to like be in saying exactly what they're trying to get across? Let me put it this way. If you give this essay to 10 people, all 10 people should basically say exactly the same thing about this essay. Okay. Um, because you don't have control over the person or people that are going to read this essay and they're going to be reading them really quite quickly. And they might be reading over a hundred applications a day. All right. Uh, at a point. So what you want to do is you actually want to be, you don't want them to have to think about what you're trying to tell them in this essay. Like I'm having to do a lot of thinking to understand like who the student might be. And once you are at that point, you've kind of lost them. Mm. Uh, so it's what I call the accept mindset, where from the beginning of the essay to the end of the essay, you need your reader to think, I want to accept this student. Once this person starts thinking, how is this relevant? Like, I don't understand how this is relevant. They'll start thinking they're going to reject. Mm. And once they, once they start thinking reject, it's almost impossible to get them back to accept, no matter how good the rest of the essay is. So what you want to do is you want to control what your reader is thinking at each point in the essay. To the point where basically, if you gave this essay to a hundred people and they said, what did you learn about the student as a result of reading this essay? They would basically all say exactly the same thing. That's what you want. So be, feel free to be really direct. Um, you know, you could be a little bit subtle if you want, but if you're being subtle, make sure that every single person that ever would read this essay would pick up on it, on what you're trying to say. That's, that's the important part. Okay, another question about like how personal to get. So um, how personal can one get in writing down his or her own personal experiences in overcoming the hurdles in their year, early years of childhood in attaining an academic achievement in their current years? Does this, how, how does that sound in a personal essay? Will that sound like a sob story? Yeah, so here, here's the thing. Um, when, you're, when you're writing, like how personal to get, right? You want to be fairly personal. Uh, at the same time, really think about like, what is the topic you're writing about? Um, so in other words, like if there was like some sort of what I call like an inciting incident, like of something that was like not ideal that that happened to you at, at some point in the past uh, or to people around you and that it significantly affected you, that shouldn't be your entire essay. That should be maybe a hundred words of your essay or 50 words of your essay. It's not much, but what I wanna do is like, if you feel like it's a critical part to your overall story, as a person, you want to be like very clear that this happened and this is how it affected you. And then like talk about how have you changed as a result of all of that? And like, what have you done since then? And the most of the essay is going to be about that. Okay. Um, so you really want to like, you can get fairly personal if it was like a really important thing. Uh, but then, you know, and, and, you know, it's like my, my general opinion is any, subject of an essay can make for a really, or topic for an essay can be really compelling as long as it's like covering the right types of things. Um, and th that a lot has to do with like the different traits that you have. Um, at the same time, uh, there are certain topics that are less compelling or it's much more difficult to write in a compelling way about, okay? And that would be like improving your academic skills or it might be like, marching band, uh, or it might be drama or theater or, or sports, right? So there are some topics that are much harder to write about because it's harder to prove that you're going to be successful in college and beyond when you're writing about, you know, how you scored the game winning goal, for example. So I'll just say, um, I don't know if you guys know, but I have a son who's in 11th grade. I was just invited last week um, to his school and they had three admissions officers, you know, kind of give them a little talk. And um, they, at the end, they said about um, the essays that they see most frequently. And one admissions officer basically said, please, she was begging, please, I know if you're a, a student athlete, please do not write about um, tearing your ACL. They, and she went through, she kind of like gave it an example essay about from start to finish about what she sees over and over and over again about tearing the ACL. And it, it was it was a little funny, but it, you know, <laughs> um, I think everybody got the point. It's kind of what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, what's what's fascinating is that <clears throat> there are occasionally a tear your ACL essays that are incredible, <laughs> but <laughs> right, but it actually has to do with very little about tearing your ACL or recovering from it, and it has to do with more of like 
that's an inciting incident for all these other things that the student ended up doing in their lives. Right. Like it's, 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 uh, anyways, it's fascinating, but yeah, yeah like I I've seen a lot of it, 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 you know, most of these people have seen, it's very hard for them to like see like a creative essay, but that's, a, that, you know, an essay that like they haven't necessarily seen before, but that's okay. Right. That's completely fine. Cause they're really just trying to understand who you are. Right. right. That's, that's the critical part. And so yeah. I think, I, I was going to say, I have a question, Brad. I'm just curious. Um, you know, you went through these tonight. It was great. Um, you kind of gave each of these essays, like, options of, like, the different directions that they can go in, right? So yeah. when when um, people send in their students' essays and they get feedback, how can how does, how does that come across in the feedback? Like, you know what I mean? Like, is somebody saying you could have taken it this way, you could have taken it this way, or have you thought about this? You know, you know I'm just kind of to give people a sense of what they're going to get back. Yeah. So that's, that's a great question. Let me see if I can actually like pull up an example of feedback that we provide. Okay. So this is like a typical essay that we do. And so like the feedback that you actually get back um, is like, we'll have some opening remarks that just kind of give you an overview of, okay, these are the changes that you're likely going to need to make. And, but we have an action plan for you. And then we'll talk about, here's what I learned about you in the essay from a content perspective. And then we'll actually go through and like identify the gaps in the content. And so what we do is we actually identify two to three big things, similarly to what we did tonight that says, here's how you can go about approaching improving your essay, right? And we actually go through these different brainstorming questions that can kind of help you. And if you can answer some of them, then you can make, you know, you want to head down that direction or there might be another direction that you need to head down. And so we try to provide all those different like sets of questions that kind of help you think through where to go with the essay and sometimes you decide your student will decide hey i should write about something completely different and those brainstorming questions may actually help you think about some of those other things that you might want to even write about okay so it kind of jogs your mind and be like oh this this other fantastic thing that i wanted to write about so like for example uh this is a student uh, he's probably almost done with upenn now i would imagine uh but he wrote the first draft of his essay that we saw was like basically about his like family history okay and his like a little bit of his life story and i was like ah it's okay it was great uh but we provide him a bunch of brainstorming questions He's like i can't really answer these questions but he thought about well what are some of the other things that kind of do answer these questions and he ended up writing a, this awesome essay about how he ended up you know essentially he ended up um kind of running his family business that was like they owned like a uh, like an apartment complex somewhere right and this is like an immigrant family and that sort of thing and like he was like evicting tenants and like dealing with legal stuff and doing all this stuff like as a, like this high school kid and it ended up being an awesome awesome really compelling essay right so the, my point is like you don't have to get married to a specific topic but a lot of this stuff will kind of help you think through oh this is how i can make this topic way better um or it might help you think about like oh this is, i could actually write about something else that could be a lot more compelling Okay, uh, and then we actually provide an example outline uh, to similar to what we did here of like, how do I actually rearrange my content in my essay and how do I fit in all this stuff? And like, what should my essay kind of look like when I move to my next draft? And we'll provide some like high level comments actually on the essay itself of how to do that. But we find that between a first and a second draft of an essay, students are making some fairly significant modifications. So we usually don't provide much sentence level grammatical feedback on a first draft. We usually do that on like a second or third draft. So most students are doing like two to three drafts of their common app essay with three is like the most common and one to two drafts of supplemental essays with us. Okay. And then the other thing was, you know, and so people know you can um, send in your student's essay and they will get, you know, comments what Brad is just saying, but this is the first year you kind of also offered this one-on-one. -on -one coaching right oh yeah yeah this is the first year we've really started doing a lot of like the one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions when you first mentioned it in my head i thought well you know if i'm a if i have my student and they kind of you know don't know where to start or they don't know what topic that that would be a great you know way to, to start and it still is but i'm also thinking it's actually they could send in their first draft and then use like a one-on-one -on -one to have this whole discussion you know kind of like like they like the yeah. that they had almost like you gave now you know kind of like where they gave a little taste to somebody about what they were thinking and then you can you know talk about yeah that. yeah so my my opinion yeah so my opinion on that is like with what we do what we did tonight and just like live feedback what we find is that 
using a coaching call can be really effective if your student is not confident in what they're writing about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's, it's almost like you really haven't picked a topic yet and you really want to dive in deep on that and actually have like a game plan for like, here's the outline I'm going to use. Here's the topic I'm going to write about. Here's the outline I'm going to use and go from there. Now, if you're fairly set on like, this is probably the topic I'm going to write about, we recommend getting written feedback. And the reason for that is because between your first draft and your second draft, if we do a call with you, um, you know, we'll, we'll take notes during it. But what you really want is like extremely detailed feedback on that you can reference as your act, your student is actually like making the changes in their essay. Okay. Um, because a lot of times, you know, a student will just like not remember a lot of the stuff that was covered or, you know, we'll just kind of forget a few different things. We just find it's a lot more effective that if you are already like, you feel pretty confident about the topic you're writing about, you should just go ahead and get uh, feedback on the draft of your essay. However, if you're really struggling with like, am I even writing about the right thing? I'm not very confident in that. Uh, I haven't even started or I'm just really unhappy with my first draft and I think I might want to write about something else. That's right. when start with the coaching call. Okay. Uh, and, and you can submit your draft with that. So we'll do the, we'll look at the draft before the coaching call even. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Sharon has two interesting questions that I think would apply to a lot of other people. She's asking if my student has very advanced vocabulary and a mature tone and mature interests, is there a worry the admissions um, committee will think it's an adult who wrote the essay? No, not necessarily. So. <clears throat> most admissions officers, um, you know, we all, and I was never an admissions officer, right? But I know a lot of former admissions officers, current admissions officers, and you always kind of want to give the student the benefit of the doubt, right? Um, at the same time, like when we're talking about large vocabulary words and such, as I always say, if it's a vocabulary word that the student actually uses as a part of their everyday like lexicon, their, their like language, use it um, almost regardless of how advanced it is. If it's a word that the student is actually having to look up, <laughs> don't use it, just don't. And because it will come across, it will be very blatantly obvious in many, many, many situations that this student does not really truly have a deep understanding of that word and does not use it in an everyday conversation. Okay. Uh, it's not the end of the world if they try to do it, but it's not ideal in any way, shape or form. And it's just like, leaves you thinking like, really, like what, what are we doing here? Uh, especially if it's a word that the reader is just not going to know at all. Um, because, you know, depending on the school you're applying to, uh, some of these schools, especially some of the smaller liberal arts schools, in many cases, that still get a lot of applications, they're, they're using um, uh, former students to actually read these essays. So it might be like a 25 or 26 year old, like imagine, or even younger in some cases, imagine like your student in five or six years, are they really going to use that word all the time while they're talking, you know, in their language? Um, if the answer is no, then they probably shouldn't use it in their essay uh, because the people reading it are just not even going to understand it either, which is not ideal. Um, so anytime I, and, and I often see a lot of students submit essays and it's like, I don't know what this word is. Like, great. Like I actually have to look it up. And it's like, well, they used it incorrectly. Great. Like why, why, what are we doing here? <laughs> like it's a waste of everybody's time. Um, so yeah, I mean, as I said, like if it's stuff that they use in their everyday language, go for it. Like they really are comfortable with the word. If not, don't do it. Okay, and the second half of her question is, is it okay to reference religion if it's something that's important to the student? Yeah, it, to it totally is. Um, you know, we, we, we see a good number of essays every year kind of written about like community and, you know, around religion, um, you know, and that's like an important part of their, their lives. Um, at the same time, like, you know, what I say is, is like, Religion is like the scene of the essay, okay? Uh, but the essay is actually about something else, which might be like contribution or taking the initiative or, you know, like how you engage with that community or intellectual curiosity, those types of things. Okay, boy, 
We, it's an, been an hour and a half. Yeah, it's been an hour and a half. I was, we were going to maybe get to one more, but I think we've covered like all the stuff that, uh, that I think we want it. You know, I think this is a lot. <laughs> a lot. I think it's great to see like live essays. It's great to hear you um, critique them. Um, it's, uh, it's good to understand what people will get back, you know, once they, once they submit their students' essays and how they can use that information to improve. So I think this was really valuable. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, one last good question. Do you see that one, Brad? How do you handle crazy essays like the University of Chicago? <laughs> That's the one essay you need to be super creative on. Uh, <laughs> I've seen some amazing things uh, there. My my favorite of those, but unfortunately, you don't learn. So, so I'll, I'll get to this in a second. My favorite of those was this student like observed that Waldo, um, like from Where's Waldo, uh, happened to be at the scene of every single major historical event where bad things happened. Okay. And so he, his concept was he's got to find Waldo because Waldo is like bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bad character. And um, so he's like, it's literally like an essay about the hunt for, for his hunt for Waldo. And it was hilarious. But at the end of the essay, after you kind of read through it, you're like, wait, what did I actually learn about this student? And you just earn, learn that he's like a really funny kid. Like, and that was it. Um, and very creative. And that was it. So when you look at that, like, so basically here, here's the, here's the way to think of any essay, even the most creative, like creative, like why Chicago essays, I need to learn something directly about the student that helps me build a better understanding of who that student is and how, and, and will they be successful at my school and beyond? Okay, so as I said, those five ma those five major traits of drive, intellectual curiosity, initiative, contribution, and diversity of experiences try to relate to those, even in the most creative types of essays. Okay, uh, and in all of your supplements and everything like that, like you want to make sure you're like driving that home that you have at least two or three of those, like in a very significant way. All right, great. Great advice. All right. Very good. Well, thank you all very much. This was fun. Download that parent's guide. Get started with prompt. Uh, you know, we're as I said we have we're reviewing a bunch of essays now. Get started over the weekend. Our people review essays over the weekend. We do coaching calls over the weekend. Uh, Fridays, Friday nights. You know, you so have a class of mine. Put your kid on a on a coaching call. Like, you know. Tell us when you're um. So as Early admission deadlines, early action deadlines are coming up November 1st, November 14th, 15th. Like, when is your craziest happen? Because I want people to avoid that. Yeah, October 31st. <laughs> <There's basically, laughs> the, the, the days are October 31st and December 31st. <laughs> um, but just leading, ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, leading up to that, though, like, is, um, I guess my whole point is, like, you're not too late to get started working with essay coaches, right? Like you're, you're just not. Um, and, but the earlier that you start, kind of the better, because we know you have a lot of essays to do. And even after you get your first draft done, you get your first feedback on that draft and you get to the second draft, you'll be so, so much more relieved and confident because you, you will see the end of the road. Because I think a lot of you right now are thinking you're just not, your student might have something down on paper, but you're not confident in it. Right. Right. And like what we're here for is to, to, to get you to a real, like be really confident in the essay that, that your student has submitted. Great. All right. Okay. Very good. Thanks right. everybody. Thank you, Brad. Right. Bye, bye. Bye.